complex numbers are beautiful. And the main purpose of this video is to illustrate that fact by looking at some of the pictures in this beautiful book called Visual Complex Analysis by Tristan Needham. I'll also show you some Mathematica demonstrations that illustrate the figures in chapter one of this book. I'll also make that Mathematica notebook available to anybody who wants to download it at a link in the description below. But before we get into looking at visual complex analysis, please indulge me for a few seconds while I mention that I posted an article at my blog, infinityisreallybig.com, recently about complex numbers. I titled it Complex Numbers Are Real, but a subtitle was that complex numbers are beautiful too. It's part of my series on real analysis study help for baby Rudin, a real analysis textbook that deals with complex numbers near the end of chapter one. So now let's get into looking at how Tristan Needham illustrates the beauty of complex numbers in his book, visual complex analysis. One of the most important things to do early in the book is to illustrate the equivalence of the algebraic and geometric interpretations of multiplication. That's done through examples and pictures like you see here. The next important thing to do is to demonstrate the truth of Euler's formula. E to the i theta equals cos theta plus i sine theta. That's done in two ways. One is through an argument related to parametric curves, and another is through an argument related to power series. These are both very, very beautiful. Also in chapter one can be found a couple of applications of the geometry of complex addition and multiplication. The first of which includes this fact, that if you've got a quadrilateral and squares drawn on the sides of that quadrilateral and connect the midpoints of those squares with line segments, you get two line segments, as in this picture, that are perpendicular and of the same length. Very, very neat. Another application includes using complex arithmetic to interpret the parametric curves that arise in spiraling and that ultimately leads to a derivation of the formula for the nth derivative of e to the a t times sine of b t. Further on in the book, we get an application of complex functions to studying what are called Cassinian curves, which are analogs of ellipses. Whereas with ellipses, you keep the sum of two distances constant. With Cassinian curves, you keep the product of two distances constant. This happens to be related to level curves of absolute values of quadratic functions. In order to truly understand complex analysis, you need to be able to understand complex functions as what are called mappings. Here's an example. It's the exponential map e to the z. It's taking a rectangle in the plane and mapping it to a portion of an annulus. As another example, we can think about the squaring mapping, and we can even think about what it does on the Riemann sphere. In all these kinds of situations, the derivative is a useful tool, and there's a name for the interpretation of the derivative that Tristan Needham made up. He calls it the amplitwist, and it emphasizes that you can interpret the derivative locally as both an amplification and a twisting, a rotation. Standard topics such as power series, Taylor series, and Laurent series are covered as well. In addition, really advanced topics such as analytic continuation, which I have a lot of trouble with, are covered in depth in the book. Near the end of the book, we delve into complex integration, not just how to do it, but also how to interpret it in terms of both flux and work. Flux of a fluid flow and work done by a force. These kinds of pictures that you see here and here are very, very helpful in interpreting what's going on. I also personally found this particular picture to be really helpful. On the right side, you see essentially what you might imagine to be a hockey puck moving through a trench. The last chapter gets into what are standard applications to, for example, flows around objects, though you might say the pictures are more intricate, but there's also an application to the Riemann mapping theorem and a very, very informative picture right here. In any case, you can now see why this book is called Visual Complex Analysis. Beautiful, beautiful pictures illustrating the beauty of complex numbers and complex analysis. I recommend this book very, very highly. And now, as promised, I end the video by showing you a Mathematica notebook that you can download at a link in the description below. In it, I bring some of the visuals from chapter one of Needham's book to life. The first bit of code emphasizes how to interpret complex multiplication. When we multiply two complex numbers, the absolute value of the product, which is its distance to the origin, is the product of the absolute values of each complex number individually. You multiply the distances to the origin. The argument of the product, which is the angle that it makes with the positive x-axis, is the sum of the arguments or angles of the two complex numbers individually. That can be illustrated by running this code that you see here. You get output that looks like this, which you can interact with. We can move z1 and z2 around, change their angle, change their distances to the origin, and we can see how the product in pink changes as we move the red dots around.
Another couple bits of code that I have include first one that helps you see complex addition as composition of two transformations that are translations. If I enter the code, I get this kind of picture. I can let this parameter lambda increase, and I see that the red and blue arrows add up to the purple arrow, and I can think of those as translations. I can also move these arrows around to be in other spots, and once again, think about addition in terms of translations. This code here illustrates the derivation in terms of power series of Euler's formula that we saw in the book. If I enter it, I get this kind of picture. I can change the final angle if I like. I can also increase R, which is the viewing window, and I can step up through the values of the series, both the real series for e to the theta and the complex series for e to the i theta. I see that e to the i theta is always on the unit circle, no matter what theta is. A couple more bits of code to show you. This first bit shows that line segments connecting midpoints of opposite squares on sides of a parallelogram are perpendicular and of the same length, and it doesn't matter what parallelogram you're dealing with. You also could even have a non-convex parallelogram and it still works. Finally, this is code that can be used to illustrate the parametric spiral that we saw in the book. If I enter it, I get a picture like this. I won't explain everything about this picture, but I will move these sliders to show you how things can change. They are related to things in Needham's book, and this will definitely help you understand what's going on if you read that book. Thanks for watching.